Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Solar flares blamed for Airbus A320 series in-flight control issues. Cleveland officials float closure of local GA airport. Baikonur launch pad sustains damage during last liftoff. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Solar flares blamed for Airbus A320 series in-flight control issues. An in-flight incident that took place on a JetBlue flight from Cancun, Mexico to Newark, New Jersey on October 30th has resulted in serious cautions for the 11,300 aircraft in the Airbus A320 series. The scheduled flight, Flight 1230, required an emergency landing at Tampa, Florida with several people requiring hospitalization after a flight control issue and a sudden uncommanded pitch change. Airbus released a statement concurrent with an EASA emergency AD, stating, quote, analysis of a recent event involving an A320 family aircraft has revealed that intense solar radiation may corrupt data critical to the functioning of flight controls. Airbus has consequently identified a significant number of A320 family aircraft currently in service which may be impacted. Airbus has worked proactively with the aviation authorities to request immediate precautionary action from operators via an alert operator's transmission in order to implement the available software and or hardware protection and ensure the fleet is safe to fly. This AOT will be reflected in an emergency airworthiness directive from the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. Airbus acknowledges these recommendations will lead to operational disruptions to passengers and customers. We apologize for the inconvenience caused and will work closely with operators while keeping safety as our number one and overriding priority." End quote. The FAA has also published an emergency AD. After the break, Navy returns Fat Albert to UK for new center wing box. Direct Fly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single engine, two seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA-certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel-powered liquid-cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at DeltaHawk.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Navy returns Fat Albert to the UK for new center wing box. Fat Albert, perhaps the world's most well-recognized C-130 Hercules support aircraft for the Navy's Blue Angels, is headed to Marshall Aerospace in Cambridge, UK to have its entire center wing box replaced. The center wing box is a critical component that has a finite operational lifespan in total flight hours or years in service. It's the primary major structure that serves as the attachment for the aircraft's outer wings to the fuselage and bears the brunt of the significant operational load and sustains extreme stress during flight. Samson gains tailfold patent for a switchblade. Sam Bousfield, CEO of Samson Sky, has been granted his eighth design patent for the switchblade flying car. This newest patent covers the design of the unique tailfold and retraction mechanism of the vehicle. The mechanism is designed for convenience and works easily and seamlessly with the touch of a button in the cockpit of the vehicle. It enables the tail and propellers to retract into the body of the vehicle and fully protects all flying surfaces while in drive mode. MD-11 troubles trigger Western Global pilot furloughs. Western Global Airlines is facing its most severe operational crisis to date after the federally mandated grounding of all MD-11 aircraft pushed the company to furlough all pilots assigned to its aging trijet fleet. VP of Human Resources Tom Romneos wrote, quote, This is devastating to WGA. Even though WGA has a perfect safety record, it's the most negatively affected by the UPS crash. The current situation is untenable, threatens the company's survival, and leaves WGA no choice. 
Embraer delivers 1700th EMB 203 aerial applicator. Embraer celebrated the delivery of the 1700th Ipanema crop duster worldwide. The aircraft gained type certification in 2015 and is currently in the EMB 203 version. It's a sales leader in Brazil with 60% of the domestic market. Embraer has sold more than 180 of the aircraft in the last three years, and it continues to be preferred by rural producers because it offers a wide range of equipment to boost productivity and precision. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Cleveland officials float closure of local GA airport. Cleveland officials are again attempting to close a beloved community airport, this time by exploiting a federal loophole. Mayor Justin Bibb and Cuyahoga County Executive Chris Ronane have asked Congress to help them bypass years of FAA red tape that they agreed to in order to get tax dollars and waive more than $9 million in federal grant obligations that legally bind the city to operate the airport until 2036. Supporters of closure argue the 450-acre Burke Lakefront Airport is underused and costly and that its footprint could instead host parks, housing, retail, and public spaces. The push faces steep structural challenges. Because Burke has accepted federal dollars, closing it early normally requires repayment of grant funds, FAA approval, and proof that shutting down the airport benefits, not harms, the national aviation system. A congressional act could sidestep those requirements, which is why city officials are leaning on federal lawmakers rather than the typical FAA closure path. Opposition has surfaced quickly. Organizations warn that Burke supports essential aviation services, including Cleveland Clinic Aeromedical Flights and the Cleveland National Air Show. The annual air show draws more than 100,000 spectators and generates an estimated $7.1 million for the local economy. After these messages, Baikonur Launchpad sustains damage during last liftoff. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most. Time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Welcome back. Baikonur launch pad sustains damage during last liftoff. The successful launch of three crew members to the ISS on November 27th caused serious blast damage to the pad at Baikonur Cosmodrome, Russia's only active site for crewed spaceflight missions. The launch was otherwise successful in transporting the two Roscosmos cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut safely to the station. A service platform, also referred to as the maintenance cabin, is located within the flame trench at the Cosmodrome Site 316 in Kazakhstan. The building collapsed in the wake of the Soyuz MS-28 crew launch on the Soyuz 2.1A rocket to the ISS. The platform is integral to the preparation of booster launches from the pad. Roscosmos said, quote, the launch site was inspected, as is done every time after a rocket launch. Damage to a number of launch pad elements was detected. Such damage may appear after launch, so an inspection like this is mandatory in international practice." End quote. Baikonur houses only one active launch pad since its Site 1, also known as Gagarin's start, was retired in 2020 due to lack of funding for upgrades. As a result, Site 316 has been the exclusive launch pad for crew and cargo missions to the ISS. 
Site 316 has been in use since January 1961 and has supported more than 400 launches. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Era News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.